Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I will be doing a playthrough of Obsession by Kayenta Games, uh, designed by Dan Halligan. Um, this has become my latest obsession. Uh, it is a worker placement uh, game for one to four players, uh, and you are a, you play a family uh, in Victorian England who is uh, penniless and trying to rebuild their reputation. So. Um, through a variety of events that you host over a 16 round uh, game. You will um, uh, take uh, host activities and uh, invite guests that will um, help you to raise your reputation in the Derbyshire community and uh, hopefully allow you to make a match with either uh, Charles Fairchild or Miss Elizabeth Fairchild at the end of the game if you are the player with the most points. In the solo game, you are playing against an AI bot, uh, which during the game pretty much only, um, only serves to remove tiles from being available for you, and we'll go over that throughout the game. However, uh, in the four uh, courtship rounds, which are the scoring rounds, uh, you will compare your tableau that you're building against a predefined tableau for the AI opponent that you've chosen. There are several different levels, uh, beginner through expert, um, and uh, I believe about four um, AI, um, uh, predefined AI uh, challengers to face off against. Uh, it's pretty pretty quick system to play. Uh, this has been very popular for the last several years. Um, I only recently found out, not about the game, the game's been pretty hard to get. It's been kind of a grail game for people and uh, on the aftermarket selling for very, very high prices. But uh, um, I found out that they've recently restocked it. And so you may be able to get a copy uh, as the time you're hearing this now. I'll put a link obviously in the video description where you can get this. So let's just go over a little quick of the setup for the solo play. First of all, as I said, there's an AI opponent. I have picked Cornwallis here, who's an intermediate. I have not played against Cornwallis yet. Um, so all, all you really have is this card right here, and this is the uh, chart that'll tell you which, um, which of these tiles to take off. Um, I am playing the Asquith family. I've also not played this family yet. The, uh, each of the four families have a different uh, advantage, and in this case, I get a family bonus of the Dowager Countess Asquith lives with a family, which basically that means all, all the families start with four cards. I will start with the fifth card. Um, we have Patricia, the Countess of Asquith. We have Lady Eleanor Chesterton. We have, there's the Maud, the Dowager Countess of Asquith. Then there's Maud. And then we have Charles, the, the Viscount Pemberley. And we have Daniel, the Earl of Asquith. So the, um, the four base family cards that each family starts with is, they are the same. Uh, they're different pictures, different names, different titles, different, you know, um, eye candy, things like that. But uh, the benefits they, they give you uh, or should I say the favors you enjoy from hosting them are uh, are the same for the four base cards. Now to this there are there's a deck of 15 um, what are called casual guests. These are the starting deck of casual guests and I will be I've already shuffled this and I will get two of these and we'll see what we get there in a second. But then you have a larger deck of casual guests. These are easier to get, um, but they are uh, lesser power, less powerful. And in this stack, and there is the beautiful Duchess Lilo, the developer's cat. She's a sweetie. We're not using her in the game. She's kind of a joke card, but you can use her, and there's one way you can play her, but I'm taking her out of the game. But then there's a stack of what are called prestige guests, and they are... Um, they're not impossible to get, obviously. They're, they're, they're just not as common to get, I should say. And they will provide you with better favors. And they're, they're pretty key to getting you know, a bigger score in the game. So um, the next step is to take the 
the regular deck of um, casual guests and shuffle the remaining 13 cards back into this deck. So that is shuffled. I have dealt myself two more cards and we'll see who we got here. We have received uh, the Honorable Charlotte Woods. The Graceful Charlotte is the only a daughter of John Viscount Drunfield and Major William Hawes, a well-known explorer. He led successful expedition up the Zambezi. So these get added to my my hand. So most most players will most families will start out with six cards in their hand. I get seven thanks to Maud. These are my available servants that you start with, and all again all the households start with the same servants except for one family that gets an extra footman. So we have a butler, a housekeeper, a valet, a lady's maid, and a uh, footman. And one action that you can take during the game is to hire new ones. So based on a two-player count, myself and the AI, uh, these are, there's four footmen, two ladies' maids, two valets that are available. Now these two here are under butlers, and they're only available through a certain action. They're stored here in the servants to hire, but you can't just take them whenever you want. You have to uh, purchase, a, purchase a tile that gives one of those to you. We also have objective cards, and these are your scoring, your personal scoring uh, options. Um, these would not be visible to other players, but we'll have them face up for us. So we actually get five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And let's turn those over and see what we have here. We have a tile bonus of five victory points. If we have the English Garden, we have one victory point per essential. So I'll show you those in a second. We get 12 if we can get the literature group, which is the main library and the north library. We get a group bonus of 17 if we get the gentleman's group, which is the hillside kennels, the billiards room, and the cabinet of curiosities. And finally, our scoring card is a group bonus, the epicurean group, the breakfast room, and the north dining room. So those are our personal goals that we're going for. So how the game basically works is, like I said, you're going over these rounds of 16. You have three building rounds, a courtship phase, three more courtship, three more courtship, three more final courtship, and then you total total the scores. There are special events that are that'll happen as we get to them. I'll show you about that. And uh, there's a couple of extra special things that happen at certain points. Now this represents our estate, and all the families start with these same five tiles. We have the private study, the butler's room, the main gazebo, the front parlor, and the bowling green. And you'll see they're under these four different or five different categories: sporting, prestige, estate, service, and essentials. In this bag here, we have a lot of other uh, uh, tiles that will be drawn out, put into the builder's market, where we can, as we build our reputation, build our money, we'll we'll play them into our we'll we'll buy them and then we'll put them into our country estate to add improvements to our estate. So we're playing over four seasons, you know, social seasons. This is our country estate. We're trying to build it up and again, build our reputation uh, as we build our estate. Um, each of them is worth a certain amount of points and some of them start negative. And then you notice on each one, there's a event in white or a activity. So on the bowling green, we can host bowls. Two ladies can play whist in the front parlor. Two gentry, which is any of the cards, can play. Can have an afternoon tea in the gazebo. The special tile, the butler's room, is where the servants are hired. So you, with your butler, you can hire two servants from the supply. And then the private study is village fair planning and requires two family. Now those are those special cards that we had at the beginning that have the family crest on them. So we only can attend those with family. Uh, the gentlemen and ladies are fairly obvious, and then the, like I said, the gentry is anyone who is just short of nobility, so it's anybody in your hand. Um, now what's cool is, for example, let's say this one's worth negative two points. Well, there's no way to get rid of this tile, per se, but once you host, a, host an activity, and we'll go through that in a minute, I'll show you, but um, when we play the game, but when you host the activity, You'll put it here, and when you put it back, you get to flip it over. And when it's flipped over to its rose side, that's the more powerful side, and that's the side it'll stay on, in most cases, until the end of the game. And as you see, we went from negative two to two points, so that was a four-point swing. 
and then our activity changes to an afternoon tea who we can invite and then our reward our favors will change based on um, you know the new side so um, if you were playing multiplayer for example this one doesn't really change for solo I mean you'll flip it over uh, you will get points it goes from zero to one but in this case you could steal a servant you could recruit a servant from another player in a multiplayer game but there's no there's no benefit to that here so you do want to use it once because then you get the one point instead of zero points but that's not as, as important as getting rid of some of these negative tiles this one's negative three and then on the contrary this other one village fair planning you host this and then this goes from a three to a zero so you actually lose points when you do that however on the track we have two village fairs so if you have planned for the village fair at the time that these roll around you'll earn 300 pounds and two prestige points so that's really beneficial so the prestige track is 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 here and you start again this uh this family starts at the, the lowest level which is level 1.1 1. 1. and the, the one family starts at uh, starts at four one four and then what you're going to do is, is you gain prestige points or reputation points you're going to move around the track and then when you pass it you'll go to the next highest counter so you go from one you'll flip it to two then you go to three so on and so forth up to seven in this case which is the max in the in the uh, standard game so the other thing to explain and to set up is um, these are theme cards and these are hidden um, and these will dictate when we have the courtship this will be what the Fairchilds are looking for in terms of a uh, of a possible suitor so what these are going to be is they, they these represent one of these five categories and then what we're going to do is like say it was the state we would compare our score at the time of the courtship is say that let's say this is how it was we would be at negative two and in the first courtship cornwallis would be at negative two so we'd be tied let's say i won um this was a two this was already flipped and it was a two then i would get two things one i would get to take a victory point card that would be added to my score at the end of the game or i could which i could then also trade in if i wanted to it has two functions it's got a it's got a score well, I'll go and flip the whole stack over and you can see so you get victory points for or you get a special action that you can trade it in for so there's times you'll want to throw away those victory points in order to get that benefit and they're all covered here on this chart here victory point icons okay and the other benefit you get if you actually win now if you tie you both get a victory point card if you win you get to take one of these two cards into your hand until the next courtship round and they are they provide uh, greater benefits if you can host them and you can always use them uh, for any event uh, a couple other things real quick uh, these numbers here are the prestige value of these different events and these all start out at one your your uh, reputation can never go below one but you have to have a one to host these and as we put new ones out they'll have they'll range you know from up to six or so is the highest i've seen so far and they will um, your reputation has to be that high for you to host them the cards here your gentry cards also have a prestige value and you can't invite them to an event or to a activity if they don't meet that now if these come to your house for the for the season then you can always use them because they are they will deign to be with you uh, your family you can always invite and then there is one special turn late in the game it's called a national holiday and during that turn you can host any event no matter what its level is and you can invite any guests that you have in your hand no matter what their level is so that's kind of cool so the next thing for setup we have to do is there are these four monument uh, uh, excuse me six monument tiles and for the solo game or two-player game you're always going to take the sculpture garden and then you can pick any two that you want of these to add in so uh but the, the the more points that they're worth here the higher the price is going to be and this is an additive additive to the price on the track so wherever it appears on the track it's plus that so i usually always just try to keep it simple because i've never gotten a monument yet 
So I tend to just take the ones with the lowest increment. So I'll take the largest wine cellar and the big trophy, big game trophy room. And I'm not personally into hunting or wine, but what the heck, I'll throw those in there. These just sit out for the game. And put them over there with Lilo. And we will put these into the bag. So one thing that's recommended for these tiles is you're going to put them in a bag and you're going to shuffle them quite a bit. And so you can get 52 by 52 millimeter sleeves, which I've got on order, but I didn't want to use for this video anyway, because they'd be kind of shiny. Um, the same with the cards. Uh, I tend to, I bought, I've got sleeves on order for all the cards too, but uh, that's just personal preference. So I'm going to put these in. And the next thing we have to do is draw up the initial builder's market. And so I'm going to shuffle these out. Now there's only certain tiles that can stock this, the builder's market for the first turn of a game. And we'll cover those. They have to be level prestige one, two, or three. And they have to be, there are certain service rooms that are allowed to be in there. So anyway, I'm shuffling them up here and we will see what we get. All right, so we got the Servant's Hall. Servant's Hall is not eligible. And then we have the Queen Suite. That's a level four, so that's not eligible. I'm leaving off to the side because there's no point in putting them back in yet. All right, and that's the Great Hall. It's level six, it's not eligible. And then we've got, okay, then we've got the North Dining Room. So that one is eligible, that's one. We need six tiles total. And that's a two, that is the breakfast room. Oh, and look at that, Pyrian uh, bonuses. So those are out immediately, so I need to go for those. All right, and then we also have the Servant's Hall, which is not allowed to start. Once the first turn starts, the, any of these can be drawn. It's just this, they, you know, to prime the pump, they want to keep them reasonable. All right, there's a three. That's the Hillside Kennels. I believe that's one of our target items. And then a uh, North Dining Room twice. Now this will come out. There are duplicates of some tiles because in a multiplayer game, you would want them both. So we'll stack that there. Right, that's four, so that doesn't count. And that's one I want later, so hopefully it'll come out during the game. All right, English Garden. Oh, there's two English Gardens. Wow, I've not had this many draws to get the starting tiles. All right, there's a drawing room. And it's a three, so it can be in play. And finally, hopefully, we will get the brushing room, and that is that is an eligible tile. So that's a service tile. All right, so we've got our six. We'll put these back in the bag. All right, so <clears throat> on each tile is this little small number, 55, 5, 80. Oh, wait a minute. We need one more tile. I realized that I had this duplicate, and I was counting it as one of the six, and then I ended up drawing the other breakfast room. But then we did get the tennis court. So... Now what I was saying is on these uh, tiles, this small number here, and this is the sorting number, and you're going to basically just put these on the board in the from lowest to highest. Okay, so I got those tiles sorted on the board, and so for 300 pounds we have the brushing room, then we have the breakfast rooms, the tennis court, the hillside kennels, the north dining rooms, and the drawing room. So one thing about these is as you buy them, you would take one, and you can't have two of the same one. Okay, but if the AI clears out one of these slots, both of them get cleared out of the game. So it's kind of unfortunate <laughs> that the United Dining Room and the Breakfast Room that I need are both uh, in play at the start of the game. Because uh, one of them, or both of them, there's a 33% chance that one of them's going to get knocked out here. The setup is complete, um, and we will start playing. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. 
So the first thing we do is we move into turn one, which is start. And then on the board is the order of play. So the first thing you do is rotate service. And so any, any, any service that's expended, this is known as your service. Any service that's expended would move to the quarters. Anyone in the quarters would move to available, so on and so forth. And then there's nothing in the first turn that needs to be done there. And then check the round track for an activity, I mean an event, and nothing happens until the village fair. And if you had any monuments, you would gain reputation automatically. And if you have the servants hall, you can do some gossiping, which really doesn't apply to uh, the Zolo game. I have never used it yet. So now the next option is to host an activity. So these are the five activities that we have available right now, as I showed you earlier, bowls, whist, afternoon tea, servant hiring, and the village fair planning. Now on this shows you which of your service has to be available to host this. Okay. So you have to get that and you start out with no money. You're penniless. So you got to get money. You get to, to build, you have to have money and to, um, uh, you know, start building your reputation too. So we'll cover that. So this lists the who who can attend, and this list what um, which of your house staff needs to be involved to get this hosted. If you don't have this house staff or a applicable substitute, and there's a few cases where that that applies, you cannot host the event. Likewise, if you do not have the proper number of guests, you cannot host the event. On each card. You'll see, in addition to the level that your reputation has to be to include this guest, this tells you the service staff that you have to have available to service the needs of this guest. So in addition to who, what you place on the activity, you have to be able to place the guest service. So this would be a valent, this would be a lady's maid, and then your, your family requires no, no service, right? So that's good. And some of the cards, some of the cards you draw won't require service. Some will require multiple services. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> the breakfast room is 400 and I have no money. So I need to get 400. I want to make sure I try to get that one since I can afford it right now and get it thrown into the mix. So this card here, these are the benefits you get from hosting the event. So who can attend? which staff member needs to be available to host it. And then these are the benefits you get. So if I host this, I get 300 pounds. I host this, I get three reputation. If I host this, I get to draw one of our uh, prestige guests to our hand. This allows me to hire servants. And this does nothing except allows me to take part in the village fairs and receive benefits when that happens. So I definitely early on want to get this done. I want to get this done. I get some money probably. And I'd like to get extra staff hired because sometimes that's hard to do. One of the other tiles that's available right now is this refreshing room. And this allows your footman to serve as a valet. So if I were to only have a footman available, he could serve as the valet if there was no valet available. So that's cool. There's another tile that I like to get if it comes up that lets me draw somebody that's from the servants quarters. They can come early. So almost all the games I've played that's come out first and this one didn't come out this time so I think we're gonna host this one we're gonna host the bowls to try to get some money all right so to host this I need to have my footman available and then I can um, and I'll lay him down so it's easier to see on the overhead um, and then I've got to choose two uh, to gentry to attend. <clears throat> so looking at my cards, uh, I can have Daniel, the Earl of Asquith. He will come in and he'll give me 200 pounds. So I'm going to include him, I think. And then uh, he doesn't require service. Uh, Charles of Viscount Pemberley will let me have either 100 pounds or increase my reputation by one. I think I need to get that track going too. I did, was fortunate enough to get um, two draws that give me reputation increase. So I think I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hold on to my lady because there's some good car, good activities that require ladies. 
So I'm going to use Major William Hawes and invite him. So as you see, we host the activity, we invite our guest, and now the guests are invited. And now the next step is to provide service. No service required here, and a valet is required for Hawes. So once that's done, the next step is to enjoy favors. So we will enjoy our favors. We have 300 money here, plus our 200 money gives us 500. We'll just take a 500 right here, put it on our board. And then uh, this allows us to increase our reputation by two, so one, two. And when that's done, we can now buy from the market. So look at the market sh um, options here. I'm going to go ahead and take this one for 400 pounds, and I'm going to put my 500 in, take my 100 change, and grab my breakfast room. So now when you grab, a t when you get a new tile, you put it in face up, the initial side face up, and you put it in the column that you, it goes under. So now I have the breakfast room available, so we can break our fast. Uh, two gentry, but I can't, I can't host this until, excuse me, four gentry. This is really good for getting a lot of these favors into you at once. Um, but I can't host it until I get my, my reputation up to, to two. So, so I got my work cut out for me. Um, but that's the end of my turn. Um, I bought from the market. No, oh, excuse me. Now, normally when you buy from the market, if this had emptied, we would slide everything down and replace this with, any, with the first one we draw. But in this case, we didn't empty the space. So it'll stay until the AI removes something. However, we do have to now clear our board. And by doing that, all the service that we used goes into the expended box. Our guests go into our discard pile. Keep my hand face down. And this now returns back and flips over. So. One thing is this has now gone from negative two, negative three, excuse me, to two. So I just had a five point gain, but the hosting bowls again is not as thrilling. So it goes down to only 200 pounds the next time. So, but the net result is we've got the money and we got the one room we wanted to get. So the AI is actually very simple. Take this 20 sided die, we roll it and we got a two. And what would happen here is if there were a monument turn, and all that means is there's a monument available, he would use this column. But on, on this column, on a regular turn, he just is going to two, is going to take position one. So he's taking the brushing room away. And all that happens is it just comes out. And we slide down. Everything shifts down one, which helps because everything kind of goes down in price, as you'll see across there. And then we take our bag and draw another tile, the West Saloon. And we can invite seven gentry to that. And so the benefit is that you're going to get the benefits of those seven gentry. So you'll be able to invite seven people at once. So that's kind of cool. And that is it. That is round one it has been completed. So now we move the token track to two. There's no special event. And so the first thing we do is we're going to rotate service. So this come down one. And these three are available. And check the round track. Again, like I said, there is nothing on round two. Uh, we have no monuments and we don't have the service hall. So now we're going to host an activity. So in this case, and the cool thing is if you want to host, if I want to host this again the next round, I could. If I had the proper service and later in the game, you might. Um, uh, I do not have a footman, so I cannot host this at the moment. Um, I do have a uh, the uh, housekeeper, and I could host two ladies, which would give me three reputation, which would put me into the two level. Or I could go ahead and take a turn here. Um, actually, I don't think I want to do this yet. I think I want to go ahead and host the village fair planning. And the reason I want to do that is the uh, I want to get these um, the next turn is a village fair, so I will get a reputation boost as well as some income for hosting that. So pull this out of my slot here, and you can play if you wanted to, depending on how you got your board laid out. You could your table laid out. You could actually put the tiles under this under your player board, 
but I t they also give you these strips and I like to have it off to the side and it allows me to build my tablet a little bit bigger. So, uh, all right, so we're gonna host Village Fair Planning. And we need the butler, he's available. And now I have to use two family. So let's look at my choices here. Those are the ones with the crest and what benefits I will get. So she's not available, but I think I want to save the ladies. Well, I've only got one gentleman. I do want to save some of my ladies to see what benefits I get. Uh, she gives me money and he gives me money. And that would give me 300. Unfortunately, the 300 would only allow me to buy the breakfast room, which is something I already have. So uh, I'm not going to be able to buy anything no matter what on this turn. So perhaps I should go for... I could take the reputation booth. Nope, I have to have family, so I can't use her at all. So... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take Maud. Then there's Maud. We will invite her, and then I will invite him. I'm going to try to build money up for next time. Yeah, we'll do that. And I've got three ladies that I need them for for later. So I do not need any service. So uh, I've hosted my activity. I've invited my guests. All service has been provided, and so now I. I uh, I enjoy my favors. All right, so with her, I get a reputation boost of one automatically, and I get 100 pounds. And with him, I can take 100 or a reputation boost, and I am going to go ahead and take the money this time. So I'll take that and add it to my coffers. And so now I would buy from the market, and there is nothing I can buy at the moment, so I will ignore that and then clear the board. So the only service is this. And now I've lost my two points. Or I lost my, yeah, I lost my three points. So that goes down there. And then this I never have to host again. I always get a benefit. And this is on future village fairs, produce 300 pounds and two reputation. So what's cool is this, by the next turn, will go up to reputation and take me to level two. And then I discard my two guests and they go take a rest. The discard pile. All right, so that was my turn, and now the AI takes his turn, and we roll, and we get a one. We're rolling roll really low here, so uh, with the one, he's going to take position one, and so he's going to take that other breakfast room out, which is good for me. Everything slides down. Tennis courts. Well, nope, tennis court goes on the tennis court track, so I'm gonna draw another one. Alright, and we got the servants' quarters. Uh, the servants' quarters, uh, it costs an extra hundred pounds based on the slot it's at, but I can deploy a servant from the servants' quarters uh, as I go. So that's definitely something I like to do is be able to. It gives me more flexibility. I can only get one, but at least I can get one. All right, so that's round two is over. So now we come here. And the first thing we do is rotate our service. They come over. This happens here. And we check our round track. Ah, it's now a village fair. We are going to get 300 pounds and two reputation. So I'll take the 300 add into my mix. And then our reputation goes up two. So we go one, two, and we've crossed over. So that puts us at level two, which means we can now host this event. Now, one thing you may be wondering is, so for example, this needs four gentry. Well, I only have three, and I haven't drawn any cards yet. How do I get these? Well, you can take a, you can take a pass turn where you do nothing. All your servants come across. They skip all the steps. They jump ahead to this. And you get to take your cards back in your hand. So, uh, and, and then you also get $200, or 200 pounds, excuse me, to be correct. Uh, and that, you know, that's, a, that's an option. And it, and it will happen quite a few times, so. 
in the in the rounds. Okay, so now we've done that, now we are slated to host an activity. So we have to host one we can deal with, and we only have, let's see, we have currently three ladies. And we need uh, a lady's maid, so we have her available. So we can do the whist, and that gives us three reputation. Uh, we could do this, which allows us to host two gentry, and that gives us an elite guest. I think I might actually do this one this turn, because um, uh, the elite guests are very, very helpful to have. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what are we going to get if we host all three of these ladies at Whist, though? We would get, oh, well, we would get an elite guest here. And then here I would get a casual, excuse me, I say elite guest, excuse me, prestige guest. And this I would get a casual guest. This is only eligible if a male prestige guest accompanies the young lady to an activity. So until I have a male uh, prestige guest that can go to the activity, she doesn't get this, she only gets the top option. And in this case, with Patricia the Countess of Asquith, she can look at two guests and pick one, discarding the other. Or she can discard a guest that I already have. There are guests that have negative uh, victory points and negative consequences, and you may want to get rid of them. They're, they Sometimes they'll have a balance of something positive and something negative, like there's some cads who are evil to the ladies, and they will decrease your reputation while at the same time maybe giving you some money so on and so forth. So there's times you might have to play them, but you want to you don't want to hold on to them at the end of the game because they're worth negative points. So and there's some really bad ones that are worth a lot of negative points. So um, if I go with two gentry, um, I can invite these two. I could go ahead and get this, or if I do, if I go ahead and do this, I could get two prestige guests, and I think that would be a better choice. So. All right, so we are going to host the afternoon tea in the main gazebo. So we're going to host it. We're going to kick over our um, footman. And then I'm going to invite Charlotte Woods. And I'm going to invite... Uh, I'm going to go invite Patricia. Because at least I get to look at the two cards and pick the one I want. So all that's left all by herself is Lady Eleanor. She'll stay with me. Okay, provide service. I need to provide a lady's maid. I have one right here. Put her on the board and then we are done and we receive our favors. So the first thing we'll do is draw a prestige guest. And here we got Count Dmitri Konstantinov. 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 And he's worth two points at the end of the game. He regards a valet, and we will get a casual guest and a prestige guest with him. So guests, the cards you draw go straight into your hand. And then, so we receive that, and then we got a... No, I thought we were... I'm, I misread that. I'm glad I did the other, because it's actually a reputation increase of two. So one, two. And then she lets us draw two casual guests and pick one. So we draw this one. And see, this is a pauper. He's a heroic colonel, is an unsettled man, plagued by war wounds and in need of aid. So every time you invite him, it costs you 100 pounds, but you gain two reputation. So that's helpful and a hindrance. And our other choice is this gentleman here. He's worth no points at the end of the game, but we do get a reputation boost and a, another casual guest joins us. Um, and I think money's tight, so I'm going to keep uh, Charles... Wadsworth, Esquire, and then I will discard poor uh, Colonel Clark, and you discard him by putting it at the bottom of the deck. So there he is, and that is our turn. Now we can, or we, excuse me, we've received all our favors, and now we can buy from the market. So the North Dining Room that I want to have is 500 now, and I have 600 money. 600 pounds at the moment. 
I could buy the drawing room. I don't really want to pay 900 for that one. And actually something's going to happen in the next couple of turns. As long as that doesn't remove away, he'll get, that will get real cheap really quick. So I'm going to hold off on that one as well. I think for the sake of the nine victory points, I am going to go ahead and claim my North Dining Room. And I'm going to pay the 500. Pop that in, grab my North Dining Room, bring it over to my list. And I've met that, so that's probably helpful. And now I clear my board. He comes, the footman comes to expended. The lady's maid takes a break here. Excuse me, my butler is still there. And then this comes back and flips. So this goes from negative two up to a positive two. And the guests are taking a break. So now that was my turn. Now the AI is going to take their turn. And we rolled a 12. And a 12, there is no monument, so a 12 removes position 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the drawing room is removed. Everything shifts down. And we draw a replacement tile. And for this one, we've gotten a service tile. It is the butler, butler's pantry. The one that allows you to gain an under butler. So when you buy, at the time you buy this, you get an under butler. And the under butler can act as any of the male staff, the uh, butler, the valet, or the footman. And that is the end of that turn. And now we're gonna go into the first courtship round. So we're gonna move our marker forward and Three things happen in a regular courtship round. You do the courtship uh, ritual. Uh, I have to discard all players, in this case just me, would have to discard one of our victory point cards or objective cards. And then we would pass the first player marker. You don't do that in a solo game. Although someone proposed that, I believe, as an option. And, uh, but it's, it would be definitely be a variant rule. And normally you're always the first player. So uh, you do the courtship ritual first. So we have a theme, and this tells us what they're interested in, like I told you at the beginning. So we're going to draw the first theme, and it is estate. Dun, dun, dun. So we will look at the estate. My estate total is a 2. All my tiles total to a 2. And on the card, his estate total for Season 1 is a negative 2. So we win. Yay us. So I'm going to take uh, Miss Elizabeth into my hand. And she will be with me for until the next courtship ritual, and maybe beyond. Uh, and then I get to draw a victory point card. Now these would normally be kept hidden, but I will reveal them for us. So I get four victory points at the end of the game, or I can refresh all my service if I really desperately need it. I can get all my service moved back over. And that is it for the uh, courtship ritual. Now these stay out. I will build, I, I build one, two, three, four, so then you can see them all at the end and, and you track them because the final courtship's handled a little differently. It's, it's these three plus one more, but then it's the aggregate total of all of the, uh, the columns, even if they're duplicated. So that's pretty cool. And we got five at the beginning. There are other, um, uh, there are other ways to receive through cards and through uh, through victory point cards, you can receive a um, some more objective cards, but you will also, in this round, you get to draw two objective cards, and you hang on to them, and then in the next courtship round, you're going to get rid of another one, and another one, and another one. So you're going you're gonna to really be narrowing down your what you think you can score. So. so now I have to get rid of one of these. And which one do I think? So I'm building up essentials already. I've already got three, so that one's still important to me. I don't think I'm going to get this gentleman's group. Those are harder to get. Um, the libraries aren't out yet. I technically could get the Hillside Kennels. It's out right now. But that, uh, that Curiosities is pretty, 
pretty hard to get. And it was worth a lot of points, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that since I have to get rid of something. So you take that one, and again, like everything else, you just put it at the bottom of the deck. Because chances are it's not going to cycle through again. So now I've only got four victory point cards. And that is it for, for the courtship round. You don't get to refer, you don't do any service movement or anything. It just stays just like it is. And then we're going to go to round five. And I'm going to start this because you see here beginning service tile reserve. So what that means is we have these service tiles that are available right now. So we're going to pick those up and immediately take them off the board and put them over in the service tile reserve. These are available for 300 plus their cost differential. So that's what I was saying. Those are going to drop really quickly from seven and 800 pounds down to 300 plus their differential. So that's really good. And unfortunately, you can only buy one per turn. But the good thing is the AI can never clear those. So they survived, and now I can get them as I have funds, which is really helpful. Uh, there is one turn late called the Builder's Holiday, which means as long as you have enough money, you can build as many of these as you want in one turn. But that's only one turn. So. Uh, and then we have to fill that back up. Now, at the beginning, at the end, after the second courtship phase, we're going to have the PR1 tile reserve, which means any tiles that are here that have a 1 prestige rating will go here, and they'll also be 300 plus or minus their differentials. So that, again, is helpful, because it gets the lower stuff out and the higher stuff avail more available. And any time we're drawing to fill, any service tiles will go there, any one tiles will go there after that doesn't start till after season two. But as of right now, if I draw service tiles, they just go into that stack. And you can always go through that stack and get whatever you want. There's no order to them. So let's fill that real quick. So there's the main library. And I believe that's one <coughs> that I'm trying to get. And then the Lionheart Suite. Now this is really nice. The Lionheart Suite is a very special room because it, it costs 200 extra. So you have the money, you grab it, because then when you, when you play it, all you need is the butler to play it. You need to be at level six, prestige level six, to, to host it, right? But when you do, you draw the top prestige guest. You add them to your, they immediately are, they're the only ones that that take part in the suite and you double all the favors that that card gets you. So you don't know what you're getting. You're going to take whatever by random, but you play it immediately. And then when you're done, that goes into your discard pile. You have that card, you have double the favors, and then this converts to a monument, which gives you prestige every turn and six victory points. So it's a pretty cool, powerful little option. All right. So now it's turn five. So, um, Start off by moving our service across, rotating the service. There's nothing happening on the round track this turn. Um, so one thing I like to do uh, when I've won either uh, Mr. Mr. or Ms. Fairchild is to maximize uh, how I use them. So when you use them, they're going to go in your discard pile. So I'm going to try to use them this turn, and then this turn will be a pass. I'll pass on this turn. To get everything back and can maximize what I do with them. So that's going to be my goal for this. However, I don't have much in my hand at the moment. And since we're only at level two of our reputation, I can't play this fine gentleman. So I have a choice between Miss Fairchild and Sir Wadsworth or Miss Fairchild and Lady Chesterton. So since I'm going to get all my servants back at the end of the pass round, I think I'm going to go ahead and use maximize the use of the servants because she doesn't require any service. So that means I have, I'm probably going to play two a gentry or a man and a woman. And let's see what our choices are here. Um, if I play two gentry, I can get 200 money, which would be enough to get a tennis court. It would not be enough to get um, any of these because they are all both there plus 100, and so that would be 400, and I've only got 100, and I don't want to give up any more reputation to get another 100. Um, I could play two gentry here, 
Um, what would a tennis court get me? It would be a minus one to start, but then I could I could use two gentry on it to get three hundred in another round. So that is something to consider. Um, if we go here, it'd be a minus one. Then I'd have to flip it. He is at two. Right now we're tied, so when I take that minus one, I would definitely need to flip it before the next courtship round, uh, which would basically dictate that that's what I'm going to end up playing. I really want to play this to increase my prestige when I get all my cards back. Um, so I don't want to go lower than him. Um, cannot play this yet because we're not at three yet. Uh, I, can play, I can't play this with four gentry because I only have three in my hand of four that I can play. Um... I could play this now. I could play this one. Since I'm not going to be able to purchase anything I want, I could play this and increase my reputation to start with. So I think I will play that. So this is the service we're going to host, the activity we're going to host. And I need the housekeeper to provide service for that event. And then I'm going to invite the two guests that I uh, no, the whist is two ladies, so I will not be able to invite this gentleman. I will invite, however, uh, Lady Chesterton and Miss Fairchild. So now I have to uh, provide service. So, oh no, I cannot do that because I don't have that card, that uh, room yet that lets me take her. So roll this back. You have to be able to pay for the service that you use. So we will just go with our initial plan and um, no, the butler cannot fill in. The butler cannot fill in for a footman. Oh, I'm so used to having that available to me. I forgot that I had not acquired it yet. So I am not in very good shape at this moment in time. I may have to pass on this first turn and I really don't want to do that. I could use my butler and hire two new servants. So I guess that's going to be my choice, which stinks because I don't get to use, I don't get to maximize my use of her. I backed myself into a nice little corner there, didn't I? All right. I cannot play this, I cannot play this, I could play this, but then I don't have... She can substitute for a lady's maid, but if I use her for the other, then I can't use her for this. And I don't have anybody to play that one. I don't have enough gentry to play this one. Um, yeah, I'm in a... I'm in quite a pickle here. Alright, well, it uh, looks like I've, like I said, I've backed myself into a corner. So we will play the butler's room. And I will send the butler there. And then I'm going to uh, hire two servants. I don't have to invite any guests. I don't have to provide any service. So we skip straight past that. And now I can enjoy the favors, which is to hire two servants from the supply. So I am going to... What are the two options here? We do not have the one where the... Um, there's another, there's another tile that comes up that lets uh, the footman take the role of a valet, which can be helpful. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and just take the two ladies' maids. This may be, you know, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take a valet. So those are the two servants I'm going to hire. And they go into expended to start, which is helpful. I guess this is helpful too, because they'll get to be, they'll get to come across on the next pass turn. So then we do our purchase, but I only have a hundred pounds, so there's nothing I can buy. And um, so the next thing is to clear the board. So he'll come down to here. This comes back, this does flip over because it now increases to one point. So I'm not a negative anymore, or a zero. Um, yeah, I'm not a zero, so I get one point of service. Okay, and I've cleared the board. And that is, that is it for my turn. AI is going to go. 
Turn five. AI rolled a 12. There is no monument still, so a 12 is position four. One, two, three, four. The West Saloon. Move from the game. These slide down. And now we draw a replacement. And we got, well, this is service, and this is the servant's hall tile. And this allows us to place any servant to gossip about local Derbyshire family, and you steal one prestige from another household. Um, so you can't use this really. This is pretty useless in solo, but we'll just throw it where it's supposed to go anyway. And draw a replacement tile. And it's another service. And this is the energized service. And this is the one that lets you deploy uh, another servant each turn. And we already have that one in there, but there's the other one. And we finally got one. All right, so we got the south lawn. I don't believe that's out yet. And so that goes right there. So that was the AI's turn. And now we're gonna move to turn six. All right, so the rules for a pass turn are slightly wonky in that you would normally rotate your service and then um, you know check the round track for an event, which would be that. But technically, the script, if you're gonna pass, which is kind of like you don't know you're gonna pass till you pass, till you get to the choice of hosting an activity. But basically what you do is you pass, you refresh your service, you reclaim your discard pile, you then observe the round track event. Um, if you have monuments or servants hall, you process those, and then you collect 200 or refresh the builder's market, which means you can just wipe that out and restock it uh, if you're trying to look for a particular tile, and then you can shop in the builder's market. So those, that's, the, that's the process. So we are gonna take a pass turn. So the first thing we do is refresh our service, which means everybody comes across. It is now available again. And these work better when they're standing up, that you can get more in the spot. Um, reclaim my deck, so my entire deck comes back to me. It's available to me. Observe the round track event. So the round track event is objective card, and the rules for the objective card draw is to draw two objective cards, add them to the ones already in hand. So this is your chance to get new cards. So we have the sporting bonus, one victory point per sporting tile. Probably won't fill that one out too much to be worthwhile. And then an estate bonus. So when it comes time to uh, the next courtship round, we'll have to discard one of these. One of those will probably go. And then the next step is Monument Servants Hall. I do not have that. Collect 200 or refresh the builder's market. I am not really too worried about what is in the builder's market at this moment in time. So I am going to take the money so that I can buy something. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be low on money. Um, but I'll take my 200. Add it to my funds, and then shop. So I can buy this for 300 straight off. I can send two gentry there to get me some money for the next turn. Um, all of these are plus 100 and plus 200. So there's nothing I can get there, unfortunately. I could just save my money for the next turn since I did pass. Uh, I think I will do that. I'm gonna pass. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna buy anything from the market. So we passed, but the AI didn't. So he's still gonna remove something from the board. And we rolled a seven. Seven is position two. So the kennels are gone. Slide everything down. Draw our replacement. We got the drawing room. And that is the end of that turn, moving right along to turn seven. See how fast this actually plays.
plays. It's a really fun game. So starting fresh, uh, rotate service. I have everybody fresh anyway, so I don't have to do anything. There's nothing that's happening. Um, there's nothing happening on the uh, on the round tracker. It's just turn seven, and uh, we, it is time for us to host an activity. I've got all my all my staff available to me now. I want to get that reputation raised. I'm sick of being at two, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out the. Um, well, I'm only going to get to use her one time, so I can invite. For gentry and plus service, I might get some money and some prestige that way. Um, hmm. So she's going to give me two prestige no matter what. So that'll put me up to five. And if she attends with a a male prestige guest, which the only one I have is this three, which I can't use. Um, he would increase my prestige. She would increase my prestige. And she would let me draw a card discard a card so I don't worry about the money in the shopping I would go up one two three four five four five prestige I would make a loop very quickly but I would use up a lot of ladies I would use two ladies maids and one valet on that plus my housekeeper um, and come out with no money and I really need I really want to get one of those uh, Energized Service tokens, so I need to make sure I get some money here. So I can invite Pemberley of the Asquith family, and he would give me 100. Oh, you know what? And then there's Maud. Then there's Maud. She would give me prestige and money. So we're going to go with her. So we're going to do this. We're going to have a ladies breakfast. So we're going to host that, bring in our housekeeper to provide that. These are our four guests, which are just any gentry, but in this case they're all women, ladies. Oh no, no, excuse me, we have one gentleman here. Okay, I need to provide service next, so we'll place ladies made here, ladies made here, and a valid here. Okay, so we have provided service, and now we will collect our favors. So we get nothing on here, and here we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six prestige. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we get a hundred pounds from good old Maud. And then we've dealt with that. We get to, to draw one casual guest. And this is a bad one. The Miss Anne Fairborn. Few speak openly against Anne, but that there have been whispers of an indiscretion. So every time she's invited, you lose a uh, reputation and you lose two victory points at the end. If she's in your hand, so I'll have to take care of her. And then uh, Miss Elizabeth Fairchild allows us to draw a prestige guest. <clears throat> and we get Kenneth, the Viscount Ashwood, Master of Political Debate. The brilliant Viscount enjoys lively discussion in libraries and billiard rooms. He provides you with 500 pounds. But we got to get up to level 5. <clears throat> Alright, so I forgot to flip this when we made 3, so we're now at 3. So we are now done with the event, and we will now go shopping. So I am going to buy the Energized Service for 400, and I'll put that in my slot, and <coughs> and pay my 400.
So now that our buy from market step is complete, we'll clear the board. Put all our service into expended. <coughs> Discard all our guests. And bring this back. And now we flip it. And now we can have five gentry. And this goes from zero points to two points. And now onto the AI's turn. Roll. It's an 18. Now, 18 is does no purchase. So when that happens, when, when you get a 16 through a 20 on either uh, column, he doesn't clear anything out from the AI, from the uh, builder's market. But then how that works is it's just like he, it's just like us. We didn't buy something a particular turn. He didn't buy something that turn. So the good thing is then um, on his next roll, it'll be a minus five to his roll. So he'll never not purchase two turns in a row. So what you do is we just put this marker here as a reminder that the next roll will be a minus five. And we go to the next courtship round. And unfortunately, for the time being, this Fairchild leaves us, goes back. She's assessed our household and for future courtship possibility. And now we're gonna have our courtship round. So we draw our theme card. And this theme is sporting. All right, so we're in courtship round two. Our sporting total is two, and the AI's sporting total on season two is two. So we're tied. So nobody gets the favor of the Fairchilds, but each of us get a victory card. And since I'm the first player, I'll draw mine first. I got a four, or I can trade it for a, a uh, prestige guest. The AI draws one, and we're not gonna reveal that till the end of the game. So normally I just set it there and leave the marker on it. And now I have to discard one of my uh, objective cards. And I'm more apt to get some estate tiles. So I'm going to just go ahead and dish, dish, ditch the sporting. And you put it at the bottom of the deck. So just like that, we have played another courtship round. And now, before this round happens... There's a PR1 tile reserve, I think I mentioned earlier, and right now there are no Prestige 1 tiles on the board, but any time a Prestige 1 tile is on the board, it'll go into that pot now. It'll count just like the service tiles go there, the Prestige 1 tiles go there. So it gets the higher scoring tiles out toward the end of the game. So first thing we do, rotate service. So all these come to here, and the good thing is now with Energized Service, I can use one of these from here. Okay, uh, and we are now at a village fair space. So the round track is the village fair, and the we gain 300 pounds. And we gain two prestige, which is nice because it now puts us to four. Two reputation. I keep saying prestige, but it's reputation. Prestige is compared against reputation. All right. So now we're at the host activity stage. Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. You're allowed to look at what the AI is going to have. So for season three, they're going to be at seven on the uh, essentials track for season three. They're going to be at three on the service track. We're at two right now. And they're going to be at nine on the estate track. We're at two. They're going to be at five on prestige. We're at negative two, and they're going to be at two on supporting. So we're tied. So we're falling behind here. We need these three turns to be very productive in terms of what we acquire. I think the easiest one to surpass will be on the tennis court. So I think we're going to go for that. Use the lady's maid. So if I host this with five gentry, I can use my lady's maid from there. It means I, have, I, I kind of track things that way. So I only have three service to use. That may be pushing a little bit. So I cannot play him because I'm not at five yet. Ooh, I wish I could get up to five really quick. One, two, three. Uh, if I host the ladies, that would get my prestige up pretty quick. I think I'm gonna save him to build some money. So let's, let's look at the ladies playing whist because I'm still gonna have my housekeeper ho uh, serve the event. 
I'll give you three prestige. And then I need three ladies. Let's see if I've got them here. Um, we've got Patricia. We've got Lady Eleanor Chesterton. No. 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 You don't want to use her. No, we may have to use her. Which would hurt because it would give me a reputation hit. So that's... I would use all three ladies. I would require no service. But then I would lose a reputation. I would gain three. I would only end up netting two instead of being plus four, which is what I'm trying to get. Or one, two, three, four, needs five. All right, so that's not a good choice. Um. What does this get us if it flips? North dining room goes up to three. We're going to host this. We'll figure out who to invite. So she's coming out of there. So we've already used one out of the servants' quarters. And now we need five gentry. Well, we definitely can use all our family if we want. We cannot use him because he's at a five. But we can use this gentleman who was a three because we're now there. And he would only need a valet. We need a total of five gentry for this one. He gives us some money, which is good, or prestige. And um, unfortunately, nope, I can have Papa, Daniel, the Earl of Asquith. He can take part. He'll get us some more money. And then so we're using one valet. problem is everybody needs valets. Um, but he gives us a better result. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So she is, she is uh, working the formal dinner, which will be attended by Charles, the Viscount of Pemberley, Patricia, the Countess of Asquith, Lady Eleanor Chesterton. Oh, and this is nice. She's attending with a male prestige guest. As creepy as he looks, he's still a male prestige guest, so she's going to get us some prestige as well. And then Papa will be there as well. Provide service. We'll need this one valet. Uh, the rest is family. And now we receive our favors. There's nothing from the event itself. I get a hundred money or prestige. I'm gonna get two prestige from her. And card. All right, well, I'm going to take her to prestige first. One, two. Or reputation, excuse me. And I'm going to draw her card. And I'll show you why in a second. So she gives me she gives me a casual guest. He gives me a casual guest. So let's draw those first. So we got this one, ick. And this one, good. All right, so we did those. Now he also gives us a prestige guest, which is usually always good. All right, yep, very nice. So these are, are actually in my hand now. And uh, Papa gives us 200. Here, we'll add that to our coffers. Now, uh, Patricia gives me the choice here, and I can discard a guest, or I can choose from two and pick one. And he gives me either 100 pounds or one reputation. The one reputation doesn't get me too far up right now. I think I can get that with the whist or something. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the 100 pounds. Because actually, I want that Lionheart suite. That would be nice to get. All right, so that's there. And then, so we're going to use her ability to discard. So we've got this negative. We've got Miss Margaret Stowell, who's a pauper. She relies on the charity of friends. She's a distant cousin of the Duke. And if you play her, you gain prestige for playing playing a pauper. Uh, you gain reputation, excuse me, but then you also lose money because she's she's a drain. But then we also have this other negative two, um, which only costs you reputation if you do play her. But I like the I like the gaining the reputation and losing the money. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my opportunity to discard her. Disinvite her. So then she goes to the bottom of that deck. 
All right, so we have collected everything that we should. And now it is time to go shopping. So we have, what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have 600 and we would need 800 for the Lionheart Suite. Boy, I really hope the AI doesn't kill that one out for us. Because I don't think I can afford it right now. Um, I could trade for Prestige in, but I don't want to go backwards on the Prestige chart. Um, I think I'm going to hold off and hope I hope it's still there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the dice. So I'm not going to buy anything, so now it's time to clear the board. Service. Service goes to Expended. Guests, including family, are all discarded. And your token flips over. And you see the North Dining Room now becomes a formal dinner, and you can invite six, and it's worth three points. So now I'm at three, two, zero. So I'm at five, and he's at seven by the end of the season. So that is my turn. And now the AI. It's a four, and it's a minus five. Now, they don't specifically say that I found what you do with a negative number, so I just treat it as the first, the first slot. So that is going to be position one. We take this away to know that we've already taken the minus five. And we remove position one. Now both of these stoic courts go away. And then everything slides down, which is now good because now I can probably afford that as we get closer on the next round. And then we draw. And we got the long gallery. There's a lot of prestige in that one. All right, end of turn. Advance the marker to 10. There's nothing fancy happening on the round, so now we just rotate our service. Nothing happens on the round tracker, and now we host an activity. So looking at what I have available, I have a bunch of gentlemen. Unfortunately, all my gentlemen require valets. So I can only host something with two gentry and um, this will give me this valet and I can take this valet out of here and then grab one of those. And I probably screwed up. I probably should have taken, gone ahead and taken the under butler tile. So this is where I could roll it back and say, okay, that did happen because the AI wouldn't have blocked that anyway. This would then uh, staff expansion, gain the under butler, which would have been 400. Um, and playing solo, you know, you can do things like that as long as you're not, you know, you're actually cheating. Um, I didn't gain anything by not purchasing. I just kept 400 of my money. Um, but it gains me that other worker. Uh, but you know what, I'm just going to play with what I did and stick it out. But that was something I, you know, if I was playing by myself and not on camera, I would probably go ahead and just roll that back, take the 400, because, again, I didn't, it wasn't affected by anything the AI did, and I didn't block the AI, but nevertheless. So we will go here. Um, I can only invite two, because I can only cover two. Uh... Yeah, I can only anything for three. I can't invite the two ladies for whist. I keep failing to turn that one over. Um, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to get the extra money. So we're going to host this event. There. We'll send the footman to prepare the bowling green for the bowls. And then I'm going to invite these two gentlemen. As my guests, we will cover them with the valets, and we'll take the one that we can take from there. So this is my hand. And now we have provided service, and now we enjoy our favors. Uh, that's not the one I wanted to invite. I wanted to invite this gentleman, who gives me reputation. Sorry, young man. You can wait for the next one. Okay, so here we go. These are the two I want to invite. 
All right, so we receive our favors. We get 200 pounds. And we're going to receive uh, another 100 pounds. A prestige guest. All right, here we get Agnes, the Marchioness of Easton. And she requires a lot of service, but she gives you a victory point card and three reputation. So that's pretty darn good. She goes into our pot, and this gentleman gives us a two reputation. There we go. We're now almost to five. All right, now it's purchase time, and I am going to grab that Lionheart Suite for 700. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lionheart Suite goes into our pot. And it comes in at a three, and then it flips over and becomes a uh, monument. This is worth six, and um, giving you one reputation. But I can't play it until I get to six, or until we get to the national holiday. Hopefully I'll be at six well before that. All right, so we slid everything down, and... Draw the queen suite, and that's what we got on the board. All right, so we bought from the market, and now we clear our board. So we're going to take service, put them to expended, discard our guests, return our tile. And this has already been, as you can see, it's already been on the flip side with the rows, so it just goes back the way it was. Okay. AI takes a turn. It's two. So he's going to take position one, which is the north dining room. Everything slides down again. Draw the top. <clears throat> north library. <laughs> and we got the main library and the north library. So those are two that I actually want here. That's worth 12 victory points if I can get both of those. So that is something to go for here. All right, so now we advance. This is the Builder's Holiday. Now, this is a nice turn. Unfortunately, I don't have 800 and 400 to get both of those in one turn. That would be 1,200 money in one turn. I don't think there's any way I can do that. Um, but with the Builder's Holiday, you're allowed to purchase as many as you can afford from the Builder's Market or from the uh, Reserve. All right, so the first thing we do is Shift our service down, rotate the service, check the round track. It just tells us there's a builder's holiday. And now we have a host in activity. If we had one more point, I could host him. He would give me 500 money, 500 pounds, and that would just be, that would just be awesome right there. But I can't get there. Um, I can't host her till I'm at level six. I can't host him till I'm level five. So as of right now, I only have two that I can host. One will cost me $200. And I'm not really thrilled about the options here. So I think we are going to take a pass turn. Again, to try to bring our deck back up. So we'll follow the pass rules. Again, so we refresh the service. I'd already slid them over, but we're just going to bring everybody back over now. Uh, reclaim my deck. They're all back here. Kind of risky right here before a courtship phase. Uh, observe the round track event, which is just the builder's track. Monument servant hall, I don't have any. Collect 200 money or refresh the market. I don't want to do that. I will take the 200 money, which gives me 400. And then shop. So since I have a chance, hopefully this one won't run away. I'm going to go ahead and do the builder's market. I'm going to take that one for 300 for the main library. And uh, 400. So I'm going to take 400, put it back, take this, add it to my estate. And that is the end of my turn. Now the AI's turn. Seven. Rolling low today. It's going to be position two. Oh, first we got to shift everything down. So he's going to take position two. And we're going to go ahead and just, since he didn't take this position, we're going to go ahead and just take this one out now. Slide it down, and I'll just do one draw. 
for both the tiles, my replacement and that replacement. So the good thing is this already dropped 200 pounds. All right, so the first one is stateroom. Next one is the hillside kennels again. So this is the two that came out. End of the turn. Now we go to another courtship round. And so we draw the theme for the third courtship. And we got a state again. All right, so let's see where that gets us for round three. So I'm at zero, two, three is five. I'm at five total. And for round three, he is at seven, so he wins. So taking a card is, is meaningless to him at this stage. He will take it in the last round because he will get the victory points for it, but he gets a victory point card to add to his pile. So he's got two, we've got two. Play. Now I'll have to discard a card. I am coming up on the literature group. Um, I have won this one already, so I don't want to get rid of that. Um, I want to keep the essentials. I'm going to try to get this one. So, and I don't have any estate tiles. And it's not looking like I'm going to get the English garden. I'll get rid of this one first, just in case the English garden doesn't make an appearance. So I'll get rid of this one. Put it at the bottom. All right, and we are on to turn 13. We're almost done. My turn, I've got all my cards back. I've got three more rounds now. I've got a full deck. I'm playing with a full deck. Finally, for once in my life. All right, I'm at four. I need to get... So here's here's an opportunity here with the main library. Two family can attend, hosted by the butler, and you get to take one objective card. So I get, I get another objective card, which may help with my discard. If I didn't want to lose any of these, then that would help me. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and... I am, I am, I've got all my staff. I'm going to go ahead and do the whist in the front parlor. And get that negative off my board. So we'll put the Lionheart Suite up there for now. So we need to get our prestige up. All right, so we're hosting that. I need two ladies to attend. So first I have to have the housekeeper. And then um, looking at my cards. Can't invite her yet. Don't want to invite her. She gives me some money. Gives me some money, Maud does. Then there's Maud. Uh, Charlotte Woods it gives me a reputation. We're gonna drive that reputation up. We wanna get to six. So I'm gonna invite Charlotte Woods and we're going to invite, who gives me reputation? And then there's Maud. Then there's Maud. So that's where we're going with. Those are our two ladies that we're gonna invite. We're going to provide service in the form of one lady's maid. And now we collect our favors. So from this, we collect one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go one, two, three, four, five, six. And just like that, we've jumped up to five and to six on our reputation. So we crossed the first time, it took us to five, and then the next lap took us to level six. So we're one away from the max. And there's a lot of points. I've never had that high of a reputation so far in the game. So it's cool. Shopping. Uh, Mon does give me a hundred. So we'll take that. But that's not enough to do anything. So I won't be buying anything. And we go on to uh, um, clear the board. So the lady's maid goes to expended. Housekeeper goes to expended. Guests get discarded, and our whist turns into a casino, playing casino with three ladies and two prestige, or two reputation. And now we've gone up to two points, up by two points. So now we have five here, and the AI has is going to have 11 in the next round, so we need to do something about that. All right, end of my turn. AI goes, and again, low roll, seven. So he's discarding, uh, excuse me, discarding position two, which is the long gallery. It goes away, 
everything shifts down. I need that North Library for 500. Really got to get that. So we're going to draw one more place. Yep. And we draw a smoking room. Cigars and port from the smoking room. All right. So we now move to the next phase. And this is a national holiday, which means you can invite any guests and host any event. So this is where we're going to fire this off. Even though we made it to six, we're going to host this one. We're also going to get double the favors and extra bonus points. So let's see what we get here. There's no question what we're doing. So rotate service. They come over. Butler's upside down there. To host this, we do need the butler. The butler is going to provide all the service necessary for this special guest who's now interested in our palatial estate. And to play this, all right, we have the butler provide service. And we draw this guest and whatever it is, is what we get. Here we go. All right, we got Margaret, the Viscountess of Brisbane. The haughty Viscountess is well-connected from one of the largest landowning families in Shropshire. So she's the only guest. He provides all the service. Everything is done for this one particular uh, activity. And now we enjoy favors and we get to double the favors. So we're going to get two casual guests. Not one, but two. All right, that one doesn't hurt us. Comes to our hand, gives us some choices. And we get this one, doesn't hurt us. Another lady, gives us some choices. Very good. And we get 600 pounds. So we'll grab a five and a one. Place that on our board. Now we're at 700. And now it's time for us to go shopping. And we are going to very easily spend the 500 claim the North Library. And we place that right there, which means we have the Main Library and the North Library, so we've gotten the Literature Group bonus, which is very nice. We have the Epicurean Group bonus, which is very nice. I'm going to keep those separate so we know we have them. And that one, so the English Garden, it may be the one we discard here when the time is right. So now we clear the board. We had no service for her. She does go into our discard pile though. So we do get her and her two bonus points. And he comes down and now this one flips over and it's now a monument. And every turn we get one reputation. And we're at six points. So that's in good, we're in good shape there though. We're at eight on prestige. He is at 11. I don't know that we're gonna get a three anytime soon. All right, we didn't need to shift this down before the draw for the roll for the AI. Pull this out, we get the billiards room. Friendly game of billiards for 400 pounds. And now the AI takes a turn. <laughs> Another low roll is a four. Uh, there is no monument on the board, so the four is position one. South Lawn leaves, and everything shifts down, and we draw yet another replacement. All right, and in this case, we drew the fenced paddock. And as I mentioned, this is a one, so this actually is going to come up here in the Prestige One Reserve. And we draw another one. And we got another one. We got the riding stables. This one's a minus 200, so that can be had for 100 pounds. Another. All right, here we go. We got the West Terrace. That's a plus 100. All right, that was the AI's turn. We are on to the last turn here, turn 15, before the final courtship. So basically, like, got one turn left to go. So first thing we're going to do is rotate our service. We're in good shape there because I can use him, the butler, and I've got everybody else available. So I really need to try to hit it hard to get to maximize points, obviously. So this is going to be a AP turn to say the least. So here we go. 
All right, so looking at our options here, um, this will let me put out six gentry, as long as I can provide service for all of them and maximize what I get. I do have 200 cash. The, uh, do they call it cash in, uh, in England? Is it pounds cash? Or is that an American thing? That one will give me five points straight up. So I think I want to try to get that one. So I can get 400 more cash, then I can get that. And that would actually put me ahead if the prestige track is drawn. Uh, over here, um, I have I have zero. So I got three, I only got five points. Uh, I'd have to get two more to tie him there. Now one thing to remember <coughs> at, for the end game is, um, so when we draw this next card, theme card, it doesn't get judged by itself. All of these get judged for the final courtship. And that determines who one of the Fairchilds is going to uh, seek a match with. Um, either the AI or myself. So we already know that a state is going to be counted twice. I'm at two on a state. He's going to be at nine. So I probably need to try to build up my state. Unfortunately, there's really nothing here that'll give me three because you add up all the points and that would give me two. Uh, sporting, I'm at two. He's going to be at seven. I don't think I'm going to win the final match. I don't think there's much I can do to get up that high. So now I just need to go for points. You do not, you can win the game without winning the final courtship as well. So anyway, I'm just uh, filling in a little bit on the in-game thinking that I'm doing and um, and what my goal is. So I still think I want to get these points. And that's the most points I can get. And it'll give me a good point total here on the prestige. So um I can do this one with four gentlemen. I can do this one with six gentry, which means I get to play six cards as long as I can provide the service for them. Um, well, you know what I did? Um, let's, let's, I rotated service. Now I'm supposed to do round track, monuments, and servants hall. So I do have a monument now. So that monument gives me one increased reputation. So I forgot that. Now I need to host my activity. So, um, Hosting one of these would give me give me more points. That would up me by four if I could host four gentlemen. This will give me a new objective card if I host with two family, and will increase to a five as well. Um, boy, I wish that the one one thing I wish you could do is host two activities. That would be awesome. So four gentlemen can have a political debate, which would flip that over to give me four points. Plus these five I already have would give me nine in case the final column is uh, for the essentials. And that might be good. Um, all that being said, I think um, this would let me do f six gentry, but it's already been flipped over. It's already on its rose side, but I would get more. Uh, favors with four gentlemen cards or five or six gentry cards got all my cards back except for the few so Let's take a look and see who we've got here We do have we do have some high High cards in here. I do believe we had a, a five and a six That we have not yet played and that is a man and then that one is a lady. So I think we want to go with the gentry because we want to be able to play these two cards. I'll get 500 cash. You do get a one victory point per 200 cash at the end as well. That'll also give me a lot more prestige and the new victory point card. So yeah, I think we're going to definitely go with that. So uh, we're going to host the... Uh, well, let's determine first if I can get six or five, because I have an option here to host five and an option here to host six. I'm not going to get any rewards for them. They use the same uh, service personnel to fulfill them. So let's see what we can do. However, unfortunately, oh, this is so, oh, this game is so difficult sometimes. 
To play her, she requires my housemaid. But to host these events require my housemaid. And there are no substitutes. Uh, housekeeper, I'm saying housemaid, housekeeper. Uh, there are no substitutes for those. So that is not good. Can't play this because she's not a gentleman. I can't play this because she's not family. I can play this, but then I can't play her because I don't have a housekeeper. Uh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I can play this, but this only lets me do two gentry. I can play this, and this lets me do two gentry. Ooh, I did not plan for this very well at all, did I? Boy, it's such a fun game. All right, well... I could host three ladies. If I host three ladies... Nope, I can't, because darn housekeepers needed to host that one, too. I am pretty much, pretty much going to be stuck here, I think, with what I can, I can do. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right. Um... So I could run that one, and I could host both of them, and that would just give me a victory point card, which would be free points and some um, money. And the 500 would be plenty to buy that uh, stateroom. Yeah, all right. Well, I think that's what we're going to do. We're, just, we're not going to be able to go big. I wanted to go big. Um, but I like the idea of the victory point card. That's going to probably up four or five points right there. And getting to the max, uh, the max prestige, or the max reputation, um, which I actually would not get. I would get three. I would go up three, one, two, three, and that would kill me. But I think getting to the max. Let's see if there's something besides the 500 that I could do. Somebody, I'm sure we've got somebody here that would give me some reputation. So I want to I want to try to get her in here. So he would give me reputation and 100. He would give me reputation or 100. He would give me reputation and a card. He would give me two cards. So I don't want her. Although I should invite Mama. If I could do something where I could invite Mama, then she would take that out for me. He would give me two reputation and that would be it. So that would push me over the edge for the reputation, but I would not get the money to buy my 600. Ooh, decisions, decisions, decisions. She would give me the reputation. I need 600 to buy that room. And that would be one short on my reputation goal. I know this is boring hearing hearing my thought processes. Um, what is the difference? I want to look up in the rules what the difference between maxing out and having six on your final score for your reputation. It's seven points. It's a it's a big jump. Um, five, if I can get that, and if that last. Um, if that last card comes out as prestige, that might help me in the bid for the final scoring, but I still don't think I'll make it with the uh, estate cards being doubled already. Hmm, which way to go? I can always sell reputation to get enough money. If I take 200, then I can sell reputation, then I'll get to the max reputation. So am I trading, am I trying for seven more points here? Or am I trying for five more points here? That may help me here. Three hours later. So let's pull it off. Are you ready? So we're going to host this event, this activity for six gentry. And we use our housekeeper to provide that service. We've invited our six guests. They're all gentry. And we will provide our service. One, two. And everybody else is covered. And now we reap our benefits. So work it this way. 
she is a minus 200, they're a positive 200, so those cancel each other out. We take his 500 money, bring that to our coffers, and then we have, we get one of our uh, prestige guests. So we'll draw that. All right, and we got four victory points. The ill dowager Countess Claire enjoys the very best connections. She, however, requires extra aid, so she needs a two ladies' maids. But all I care about right now is her four victory points. So that's as good as getting the f possibly four victory points on a on a victory point card from our previous choice. All right. So now with uh, Lady Eleanor, we get a casual guest. And we bring that up, and this is good. It doesn't hurt us. All right, and then we took his 100, so we don't get his prestige points. We do get her two prestige points, because she's with a prestige guest. So one, two, and three, four. So that takes us one, two, three, four. And ta-da, we have maxed out our prestige. For seven more victory points, so that's a good good show. And we took the money, we took that, we took his hundred and counted it against her. We took her card, we took her prestige, we took her prestige. So the only thing left is we can draw and pick one or we can discard a card. And I think the victory points we would get from either one of these, the odds of it being offsetting the two are minuscule, so we will use and dismiss our dear, our dear Miss Margaret Stowell will be dismissed from the festivities right at the bottom. And that is done. You are allowed to dismiss a guest at the current party, or you can dismiss anyone from your, your hand or your discard pile. So we are done with that, and we are now at the buy from market phase. So we are going to spend $600 to grab that stateroom. Ta da Pay for that. Bring this over into our tableau, to our estate. And now we clear our board, which is kind of meaningless at this point, but we will follow procedure. Bring all our service into expended. And discard. Since we're not, there's no more rounds. This really doesn't matter, but might as well be fully OCD. Keep everything correct. This step also doesn't matter in the final um, final round because whatever uh, we need to move this down and whatever the AI removes, it's not going to matter because there's a variant rule that allows them to um, benefit from the tiles that come off. So then it would matter, but in this case, um, they don't, and so it's really just blocking you. And since I won't have another turn. There's not much point in doing this, but for thoroughness sake, we will go ahead and do it. Um, so I put out the music room on my pick and now we roll the dice for the AI and another low roll of four and they're going to move position one. The queen suite comes out, everything shifts down. And in spite of completeness, oh, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and roll one. Doesn't matter. It's all meaningless anyway. But we'll just go ahead and put it on your tile. And that is the end of the last turn of the game. And now we are going into the final courtship phase. So, now we draw our theme for the final courtship. And we've gotten service. Alright, so now... We do not count service by itself. We count all of these. We're going to count a state twice, sporting once, service once. And that's going to give us our final score to determine who gets the eight victory points for and makes the match with the Fairchilds. All right. So we will look at the AI first. Their service, excuse me, their estate total is nine. So they have 18 plus sporting is 25 plus... Um, what do we say? Service is three is 28 points. So my service total is two. My state total is two. So I get four, six, and finally my sporting total is two. I get eight. So it's 28 to eight slaughter. 
So they win the final card, and we'll just, for fairness sake, they'll take Charles Fairchild. Doesn't matter, it's all eight points. So we'll give the AI Charles Fairchild, and because they won that round, they get another victory point card added to their mix. So the AI score is already determined. They're going to get 102 points for Cornwallis and base and the total of their victory point cards. So I like to total mine up first. And there's my previous plays and scores. So we will write this one down here. And today is the fourth. Is it still the fourth? And we were playing Cornwallis. So I'll just write corn. And my initial. And now we total up everything. So let's see where we get. Oh, you know, I forgot to, when we cleaned the thing out, I forgot to pull this back. So let me pull my essentials back. Unfortunately, we did not get our essentials. Oh, actually, excuse me, before I total this up, I've got to get rid of a card. So I never did get the English garden, so we will discard that one. I had to discard an objective card before the totaling. So now the final courtship is finished. So now we move the marker over here to the wedding bells, which is the final scoring section. Sorry, got that out of order. All right, improvement tile victory points. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 and six is 17 and five is 22, 24. And I like to always go backwards and see if I get the same total. So two, seven, 13, 15, 17, 18, 19, And five is 24. So we add 24. And the Gentry VP, which is the net of positive and minus, we were able to get rid of all the minuses. So I like to sort my cards by point values. These are all the zeros, so they don't give me any points. And then I've got, let's see, two. And then one, two, three, four, times two is eight. So I'm at 10. 10 plus 6 is 16, 16 plus 8 is 24, 24 plus 6 is 30. We get 30 points on our gentry. And then objective and milestone VP. All right, so I got nine victory points for this one because I do have the breakfast room in the north dining room. And I do have the main library and the north library. So that is 21 points, and I get one victory point per essentials tile. So we get one, two, three, four, five. Five plus 21 is 26. And that's my best score on those. So we're at 54 and 26 right there. My reputation victory points are right there. I hit the max. And, and per the chart in the book, that's worth 28 points for hitting the max in a standard game. All right, and then we subtotal this, 54 and 26, that's 80, that's 108. And then service victory points, two victory points per servant. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is 14 victory points. And then wealth victory points, you have to have 200 per vic to get one victory point per 200. I only have one, so I get none. And you see, I usually get none when he's so tight. So I end up at 122. If I got that right for my final score. Oh, no, excuse me. And then my victory point cards, I'm at 122 now. And then I get my victory point cards, which is four, and four is eight for a final score of 130. And now the AI has 102 plus, you got three victory point cards. You got a five, a four, and a five. So you got 102 plus 14 is a 116. So believe it or not, I actually won this game. 130 to 116 against the medium AI of Cornwallis using the Asquith family. Pip pip cheerio, good chur show and all that. Oh, excuse me, wait a minute, no, no, no. Sorry, he got eight more points. So he got 116 plus eight. He still only ended up at 124. 
but I don't want to steer him wrong. He got all his points. I did not add his uh, his points for making the final match and getting his eight points. So it was closer than I thought. 130 to 124. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. So there's lots of ways you can play. I mean, you get this, you can build this up, and have, I've had games where I have lots more of these tiles out. Uh, I've had games where you're trying to get as many servants as you can. You get bonus points for basic servants. The, a lot of objective cards in the deck. I like that. Um, uh, I have not even added the expansions yet. There is a Wessex expansion that adds a another family. Uh, still, it still doesn't extend it to five players. Uh, it's still only a one to four player game. Um, I like it. I like I like it a lot. Some some concerns I have, and they're very minor. And this is just in the base game. Is and some people have concerns about these tiles drawing them from the bag that because they're cardboard they can get delaminated. Some people said they've had no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I bought some sleeves, like I said earlier, to go with that to uh, to protect them. Um, uh, I don't like these cards. I do not like these cards being so small. <clears throat> so once I see what's all in the expansions, I'm probably going to convert these because there's basically for the five categories, there's four cards of each. Um, so you could theoretically have all four, uh, which means they're just they favor. You know, prestige or sporting or estate more than anything else, um, but you never know until each each uh, courtship round. So that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, I would probably change these to counters. I don't know why they weren't counters. Um, and the same with these. They're so small, right? I mean, here's mini cards, and then here's these. These remind me of when I was a kid. I went to Washington in fifth grade. And you see these at other souvenir shops, I don't think you see them anymore, where you buy these mini decks of cards. Um, uh, little tiny picture, picturesque uh, deck of cards. Um, and that's what these remind me of. They're, they're not impossible to shuffle, they're just kind of a pain to futz with. So I would probably convert these to some counters with some stickers on them. Maybe they print some pl plastic. 3D print some plastic circles like I've done before with other counters and the same with the victory point cards. Just transfer this information to that. Um, so I don't like that. Some people have done the same thing. They've made some counters for these because you can sort these based on that uh, sorting number there, the 135 you see on this one. And so they make a token that's this color and 135 and then they draw those from the bag and then just keep these stored in a in a, in a box in order, numerical order. And that's definitely another option. So that's that's about the only flaw I've seen in the design. Um, well, no, there is one more personal personal pet peeve. This is the rule book. This is the, it's, it's very well written rule book, right? But it's that obnoxious, horrible, why did they still make them uh, full size 12 by 12 rule book? It's a nightmare. You go through and start trying to flip around and you, you know, it flops all over the table. You run the risk of knocking your components. They give you, in the game, they give you a glossary, which is very nice to define the rules. And that's a normal book. Why didn't they not make this a normal book? That makes no sense. It makes zero sense. You have this. So, so this is sense and this is insensibility. It was, it's the only way I'd put it. But it is very clear to read, very easy to understand, and, and none of these are detractions from actually loving this game. I, I've, this is now, as you've seen, I've played it, I've played it four times since I, since I cracked the shrink on it. And it's been very easy to understand, very little difficulty at all. Um, so, hope you've enjoyed this playthrough of Obsession. I know it's gone pretty long. It'll play a lot quicker when you're just playing and not describing and talking and sharing and all this kind of stuff. When you play it solo, it will play very, very quickly. Um, the turns go, go by very fast. You know, adjusting for the AI and rolling a die, not difficult at all. It has enough randomness to it. Uh, I like the randomness of the of the themes that come out uh, each each courtship round. I like the victory point card randomness. I like your objective card randomness. Uh, I like the, the way the tiles come out. And they slide down. I actually like this. This didn't make any sense to me at first, but now it does. It gets the, you know, the reserve, gets these lower value but highly necessary tiles out there. Uh, this is probably the first time I've never used the one where, and I haven't even seen it, where the uh, where the footman can act as a valet. I've always I've always gotten that when I could because it really made it so you could play more of your cards. 
uh, a lot easier having those. And then you can buy these because you get four. There's four of them available. So since that didn't come out, I had to change my my plan. I usually I usually get a lady's maid and a valet. I mean, his footman because he can be a valet too. He's he's multitasking. But I had to take that guy because I knew I had a lot of gentlemen coming up that needed that service. So anyway. I do appreciate you watching if you watched it all this all this way through uh, i'd love your feedback i'd love to know what you think of this game uh, it should still be pretty readily available now i think i think it has proven its character and its value and i think it'll be uh, a green greenfield game for a long time to come so if you got an opportunity now to pick one up i definitely suggest you do it is a it is a blast to play i cannot wait to teach this uh, to my wife and to some friends and actually play it multiplayer and see how they like it. Um, you know, and you just have fun having fun with the names of Kenneth the Viscount Ashwood and, you know, the pictures, the vintage pictures that they're using in here. It's just so cool. I can't imagine. I mean, I could be related to some of these, so you never know. And and for one more time, there's Maud. Then there's Maud. I'll wrap it up now, and I appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe. All those goodnesses. If you like the stuff on the channel, we have a Patreon that you can support for very little money per month. If you if you like it, uh, we want to keep this content coming. Hope to do a lot more playthroughs as well, and uh, and mess up the rules for everyone to see. So, again, thank you so much for watching, and God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.